A story from the UK now. NHS nurses being investigated for industrial scale qualifications fraud. Go away, Guardian. A scam involves more than 700 healthcare workers who used proxies to pass tests in Nigeria, enabling them to work in the UK. Now, why it was ever deemed reasonable to accept uh, reports of qualifications from a third world country, I don't know. Now, Nigeria, granted, is not, it's not among the worst third world countries, but still. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to trust that unambiguously, especially not trust it to the extent that you put people at risk, potentially. Um, chat, press one if uh, you feel like this skeleton does. If this skeleton captures your mood, well, especially when hearing about this story. Yeah, so let's have a look at this. Hundreds of, because like, the thing is, um, I believe in a healthy society, a national healthcare service is not too bad. It might still not be the best solution, but I, I repel the notion that it is just unambiguously a terrible idea all around. Today it is. <laughs> Today it's got to that point. But I think the issues with the NHS are not necessarily inherent to its nature. They are in much the same way as uh, our democracies have been corrupted. The NHS has been corrupted too. At its best, it's fine. At its best, democracy is the best there is. The NHS less defensible than democracy, because I think democracy is, is the better choice. NHS, I wouldn't necessarily recommend. I think not providing the service by the government is probably for the best. Um, but providing something as a nation, I think, is, is, is right. So I'm interested in finding out what the actual problems are and not merely writing off the whole thing as just inherently a terrible idea. Though I think some people in chat would. I wouldn't go quite that far with it, though, as I say, it was not, not the system I would propose. Um, I had a theory that um, the, more, uh, the more you try to cut the budget of something, the more you try to reduce the, spend the expenditure of something, um, unless you do it very carefully and very wisely, what will happen, especially when it comes to uh, a, a, an organization like this where ethics are so important, what will happen is that your managerial class in that organization will try to find ways to cut costs. Now, they usually, they usually be resistant to cutting their own funding or to, or to reducing the structure of the organization. They're not, they're not going to literally get themselves fired. Um, beyond that, they will try to find ways to reduce the expenditures, but the average person will have moral qualms about reducing the quality of care in order to reduce expenditure. But then they will have failed in their job of reducing expenditures and will be let go or will not survive any kind of redundancies. The managers who can find ways to reduce costs will remain. And if you were to cut the quality of care or ethical considerations, that would reduce costs. So, I'm just saying this is part of the problem, not the whole one, but this is probably happening, that you've had a selection process in the NHS for years where all the, manager, all the, the managers and probably lots of other members as well have just become selectively less and less ethical because of the need to reduce uh, expenditure. Now, the problem, of course, is that the NHS costs a lot anyway. Even at healthy times, it costs a lot, but it costs a lot more these days for multiple reasons, including massive immigration and health tourism and all this stuff. Um, if it was just for actual, proper, ordinary British people, and we didn't have a massive amount of immigration, um, which was filling it up, it'd probably be fine. As I said, not necessarily the best idea, but probably fine. But it's not, unfortunately, as many people have, have, have been discussing. And I know as, as much as, but you've seen more of this than I have. Uh, I'm even fortunate not to need to rely on the NHS much in my life. Uh, I know others have not been so lucky. They are spending, the, the, the reason that it's not sustainable is not necessarily because of its core purpose. It's for other things, exploits, edge cases that have become bloated and, and extreme. The unhealthiness of our economy, not just the Britain's economy, but the world's economy in general also can't be helping. Successive attempts to save money have cut money from just the places where it is needed most in the NHS, it seems. And some of the ways that the NHS has been uh, damaged and made worse are, as we're seeing in this article, not fully the fault of the NHS itself. In this case, they should have checked for sure, but this is, this is literally a scam, an industrial scale scam run 
against the NHS, which has been discovered, for better or for worse. It's finally, finally eventually happened. Let's read a bit more. There are a lot of organizations chat. The management is the problem. Now, uh, there's plenty of on-the-ground workers in the NHS. I've heard many reports who are terrible and unethical and, and, and evil. And that, I, I think, is an extension of the rot that probably begun in management. I've heard from people that would know that the UK police is the same way. Hundreds of frontline NHS staff are treating patients despite being under investigation for their part in an alleged industrial scale qualifications fraud. You know, all those, all those um, immigrant, non-white doctors and engineers, yeah, not even the ones that had qualifications, it turns out, were doctors. More than 700 nurses are caught up in a potential scandal. It says here just nurses, so perhaps it isn't doctors, actually. Um, which a former head of the Royal College of Nursing could said could put NHS patients at risk. The scam allegedly involves proxies impersonating nurses and taking a key test in Nigeria, which must be passed for them to become registered and allowed to work in the UK. Now, if that were to happen, if you were dealing with a company where you could not trust the integrity of everyone in, in it, which you can't really trust anywhere, but you can trust closer in, in decent places, um, then, yeah, they would do this. You would have people that can pass the tests being paid by people who can't so that the people who can't can go over to foreign countries, wealthier countries like the UK, and pretend to be nurses. It's, uh, yeah, ter terrible fraud. Yeah, I'm sure the field, like, that's a really good example. Like, any, any organization that has um, uh, diversity officers, that's bloat. One diversity officer, one person who's there for ideological reasons, is bloat. Yeah. And uh, 800 is a lot worse. 40 million a year, 40 million pounds a year. It's um, obviously that should be cut to zero, but 40 million isn't that much to the wealth of a nation. The NHS costs are much higher than that. The NHS probably only cares because it got caught taking these people. Maybe. As I said, the NHS does not have to be corrupt, but I think it largely is at the moment. It's very, very worrying if there's an organization that's involving themselves in fraudulent activity, enabling nurses to bypass these tests, or if they are using surrogates to do exams for them, because the implication is that we end up in the UK with nurses who aren't competent. Well, that's putting it pretty simply, yes. Yeah, the, the field who lives in California uh, is... Uh, explaining what's happened to the NHS. Import Infinity Africans to staff NHS. Demand on NHS rises. The doctors and nurses import Infinity African. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that being basically the pattern. Uh, said Peter Carter, the ex-chief executive of the RCN and ex-chair of the three NHS trusts, calling it an industrial-scale fraud. He praised the Nursing and Midwifery Council for taking action against those involved to protect the quality of care and patient safety and the reputation of nurses. I'm sure, like, if it's only 700, I'll be surprised. And then implies it's a pretty recent thing. Uh, it could be a lot worse than that. I have, um, yeah, that's generally true, the conquest laws, uh, Daddy Bill. I have heard uh, many stories, particularly actually from Aiden, um, that particularly non-white uh, medical staff for the NHS are the ones routinely abusing elderly, mostly white people in nursing homes, for example, and in other places too but just treating them inhumanly, treating all kinds of patients inhumanly. And there's usually non-whites doing that. I've heard- There's a concept in that. nursing called uh, bedside manner. And mm. uh, yeah, they don't have it. I, ha I have a story time for this, if, if that's okay. Go for it. What, what um, I was going to say just quickly is that it may be that most of them are these fraudsters. I'm not trying to ex exclude the possibility that it's, it could have something to do with race or some foreign culture, but it could also be largely this specific fraud that led to most of them getting in. It might be much more than 700, but go ahead, Moch, uh, give us your story time. Mm, okay, so I, I, spent ti I spent a lot of time in like care homes growing up because I had an, a grandmother who, after I stopped being a young carer for her, was in a care home. I'd see her quite a lot. And eventually she was transferred to a dementia ward in hospital for sort of palliative care. And you know it was a dementia ward because some uh, fun, fun fact people might not know is when a patient in a hospital has dementia, they signify this by drawing a blue butterfly on their like patient notes and on like whatever whiteboards they have around the beds. 
So you know it's a dimensional ward because you walk in, you see the butterfly, it's, it's whatever. So these are very specifically elderly people who are not right in their minds. They like You are just trying to give these people the, the comfiest exit you can possibly give them. So my entire extended family is crowded around my nan, who is asleep, unconscious, in her bed. And like we're expecting this is probably going to be the deathbed, essentially. Everyone is around her crying and just like holding her hand and trying to be nice and peaceful and all that and just generally saying goodbye. And in the, uh, just, and we're, we're, you know, it's, we're the only ones currently visiting anyone on that ward, but everyone else is just like either asleep, unconscious, or they're, they're just, just they're, they're being ignored essentially. Nothing's really happening. And the nurses who are on this ward are a bunch of like big fat Caribbean type women. And we're all just there, like, crying and just trying to get a little bit of privacy around this deathbed. And what are the nurses doing? Loudly talking and gossiping with each other. And one thing I distinctly remember seeing while I was sat crying around my dying grandmother was uh, one nurse taking a patient's, you know, like, the clipboard that has the information on it, taking that and using it to slap another nurse's ass playfully you know, like five meters from the deathbed. So yeah, I, I, I have slight issues with the, with the nursing in the UK. Yeah, that's pretty awful. Um, I've, uh, it, it, it should not be in the character of the British person to permit themselves to do that. Um, but unfortunately, not only has the character of the actual British person diminished in recent years, but not all people in Britain are really British. Um, so yeah, it's, it's both problems in that case. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very unpleasant. Um, the stories that uh, Aidan has told are uh, uh, horrifi uh, hor horrifying as well about that. Um, and now, I don't know what the correlation is between race and those issues. I suspect it's not a, as, as with everything when this comes up, it's not an inherent thing about the race. It's, it's a matter of um, coinciding factors, i.e. propaganda regarding race and bad selection of those who are that race from those nations. Um, but still, if it correlates with the race, then that's, that, that matters. Um, but as I said, it might not be that they are just inherently that way. It might be that they're all actually frauds. Um, regardless, the one place that you should have people who care about dignity like that is a hospital. Yeah, it goes, they're selecting for the wrong things. That's my point. Uh, Dirty Bill, select, civilization is only incommunicable if you assume on a collect, in a collective sense, which you don't have to. Individually, it certainly is communicable, but you have to choose the right people. Yeah, I know there's a lot of abuse in nursing homes. It's horrible. The, the reason, of course, that we have to be, we have to suppose things about this, about the correlations between different groups and the, the, how abusive they are in hospitals is because no one's going to do that research. Can you imagine, and a study comes out about black nurses and medical staff in the NHS are 16 times more abusive than white nursing staff in the NHS. I don't think that's the kind of study we're likely to see coming out in the UK anytime soon, unfortunately. It probably would be illegal in some sense to even do the study, unfortunately. Be good to see, though. Abusiveness by race. I'm sure even that would be biased, but it would still show a disproportion, shall we say, a little bit of a 1350 there. Now, I don't know that, uh, so I'm not assuming. Uh, that that's the case, but from the anecdotes I've heard and from the way politics has affected race or affected things in correlation with race, it could be, it very much could be. Dealing with terminal patients all the time can do things to staff too. Yeah, I'm sure it can, Somnus. Still, they're supposed to be there because they're the people that can handle it. Yeah, that's horrible much. Okay, let's continue. Nurses coming to work in the UK must be properly qualified, given a nurse's role in administering drugs and intravenous infusions, and responding to emergencies such as cardiac arrest, Carter added. 48 of the nurses are already working as nurses in the NHS because the NMC is unable to rescind their admission to its register, which anyone wanting to work as a nurse or midwife in Britain has to be, unless directed to do so by an independent panel at a hearing. I don't know what the hell that means. It's a really long run-on sentence there. Don't know. In the meantime, it has told them to retake the test to prove their skills are good enough to meet its standards, but cannot suspend them. Well, that's silly. 
I, I don't know. I don't know what the reason for that would possibly be, but um, if they are not eligible to be in the job that they're in, and they've even committed fraud to get there, then there shouldn't be any arbitrary protections against that. The 48 are due to face individual hearings starting in March, at which they will be asked to explain how they apparently took and passed the computer-based test of numeracy and clinical knowledge taken at the Yannick Test Center in the city of Ibadan. At the hearings, a panel may direct the NMC to remove individuals from the register. The Times recorded raised suspicions because they were among the fastest the nursing regulator had ever seen. They were just, they were just the best. What can I say? They were just the very best. But the NMC is taking more direct action with a 669 strong second batch of Nigerian health staff, again, mostly nurses, but also including fewer than five midwives, whose test results it has found were also obtained through fraud. Most of them have also already come to the UK, sources say. Well, that could be changed. However, they are in a different position to the 48 because they are thought to be mainly working as healthcare assistants in the NHS and care homes. See, that's the problem. It's, it doesn't matter what their job title is. If they're around people and they do not have the qualifications, and even, even, not, even, like, not even they just don't know what they're doing, medically speaking, but if they come to this country on the basis of a fraud, then I don't think they're suitable. Not suitable to, to care for our elderly or our ill otherwise. Um, because the NMC has not approved their applications to join its register while it continues to investigate widespread impersonation at the Yannick Test Center. About 80 nurses from the 669 applications have obtained a new CBT test, must have been painful, and apply to join the NMC register so they can start working in that role. However, the nursing regulator has banned almost all of them because it has serious concerns about their honesty and trust with them. So at least something's being done about it. You gotta wonder, like, whenever you see a story from any European country, um, you gotta wonder, are we seeing that story because it's only happening there, or are we seeing that story because they're the ones that actually found it and are doing something about it? And that is something that I will often say to, um, to Americans, who will see this, a story like this and say, God, the UK's awful, and yeah. <laughs> but what if it's just as bad in France and Germany, but it's just the UK that's found out about it? I'm sure that there are examples as well from France and Germany that I've not been discovered in the UK, but I've seen largely the former, actually. Hopefully something is done. It sounds like something is being done about this. Nibbling at the toes of the, uh, the issues with the NHS, but at least it's something. A lot more needs to be done, though. Quebec has had a lot of nursing home scandals regarding Haitian and Congolese nurses. Yeah, I don't doubt it. Um, the holy NHS, yeah, unfortunately. The suspension of national service did hurt the care industry in Germany, but from what I see, it's still all right overall here. The Browns do the janitorial jobs of Sturdy Bill, fair enough. Maybe that is better then. Lack of empathy is probably a cultural thing, more specifically a lack of professionalism. Well, I think those two certainly go um, hand in hand, uh, but they aren't quite the same thing. Feel as I'm shocked that they didn't check for scamming when Nigeria is famous for one thing and it isn't their nursing schools. Yeah, yeah, I know. The problem is that probably someone would have said, that's racist. But then if they had actually gone ahead with it, they would have found, oh, look, scamming. Let's move on to the next story.